Good morning, Tacoma New Life Church. Uh, today is November 6th, and it is Friday. And unfortunately, we still do not know who is going to be the next president of the United States. And I know for some of you, that might make uh, some of you anxious, and maybe that might create a little bit of unrest in your soul. Uh, but if anything, would it serve as a reason to look to God? Would it serve as a reason to continually trust Him? Maybe even trust Him a little bit more in this season. But would you also see it as an opportunity uh, to continually pray for our great country, no matter the outcome? With that said, uh, we are on day five of the Bible reading plan, uh, becoming part of God's own body. You know, one of the things that you will find me mentioning quite often, especially during our Sunday worship uh, services, is how we as the church, right, the body of Christ, are made up of individuals from all walks of life who are all sinners saved by grace. Right? The same God that has saved me is the same God that has saved you, right? The same God that has found me in my brokenness and loved me and cared for me and, uh, and has called me his own is the same God who has found you in your brokenness, in your shame, and has called you his own. You know, we easily forget that, right? And, and because we've been going to church for quite some time, and maybe for you, you've been a believer, a follower of Christ for multiple decades, uh, you know, maybe you're the seasoned Christian. And because of that, we have a tendency to forget that about people. And the reality of our situation is that uh, we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But somehow, right, in our self-righteousness, we can look at people and forget about God's grace and mindlessly pass judgment on others. Or what you might do is you might hold people to a, a certain standard and maybe that's weighed against your merits and the things that you have done and you compare and you contrast and when people fall short of the standard that you have created in your own life, right, you pass judgment. But here's the thing. Our righteousness doesn't come from us. It isn't awarded to us because of our merits or how well we've been able to refrain from living a particular lifestyle or from refusing to participate in certain things. You know, don't get me wrong, that, that's great, and those are things that you should be proud of, right? In, in your own sense or in your, in your own self, you can have a sense of pride with those things because that is not easy, right? By any stretch of the imagination. If anything, it's, it's tough. But it doesn't award you righteousness. You know, Jesus is the one who awards us righteousness, right? It is because of his righteousness that we are made righteous. And scripture tells us that he is going to clothe us in his righteousness. You know, being clothed is important for us as Christians. The first instance in scripture where we as a humanity clothed ourselves was because of the newfound shame. We felt after Adam and Eve has sinned in the garden, right? In their shame, right? They made clothes for themselves out of leaves trying to hide what they had wrongfully done and what was now shameful to them. Right? They try to hide what they did from God as if that were possible. But John Piper says that Adam and Eve's effort to clothe themselves was a sinful effort to conceal what had really happened. They went on and tried to hide from God. And we know they weren't really successful right, with that attempt. Because what happens, right? God knows. And God knows and God finds them. And then God goes and makes a better set of clothing for them. Right? In their shame, God removed their, the leaves and had given them a, a better choice of garment. Which is actually a preview of what God will fulfill in the life of Christ. You see, God clothing us is important and is significant. John Piper says that clothes are a witness both to our past and present failure and to our future glory, referring to Christ. It also shows just how merciful God truly is. 
In our shame, God sent Jesus to clothe us, and it is with his righteousness that we are being covered, or we will be covered. You know, our theme for this Bible reading plan today is being clothed in righteousness. In Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10, and this isn't a part of the Bible reading plan, I have taken the liberty of adding it myself because I wasn't satisfied with the scriptures they provided for today. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't read them. You should, but I feel like 61.10 from Isaiah is a good, a better place to start. But this is what it says. It says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, and my soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. And in Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, it says, For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. You know, being clothed in righteousness for us is, is, is and should serve as a reminder that we are saved by Jesus and Jesus Christ alone. It is a reminder that we can be justified or that we can only be justified by His righteousness and this morning isn't about like it, it isn't a call to be more christ-like even though that is very much necessary for our life of faith being clothed in righteousness is something that should empower you and i right it should encourage you and i it should motivate you and i to be merciful uh, to be more merciful it should encourage us to be tender hearted and compassionate it should encourage us to be full of understanding it should encourage us to take a good look in the mirror and realize who we once were and who we now are simply because of what jesus has done on our behalf it's like this i i, I think of it as like being like a professional athlete for a prestigious team you know, the honor of wearing that jersey and being covered in those colors. Something about that should instill something greater into you, especially if you are thankful and grateful to be where you are. And I think the same thing can go for us as Christians, as followers of Christ, as people who are saved by grace. Right? The same should go for us being clothed in Christ and His righteousness. It should instill into us something greater that, does, that, that doesn't separate us from the rest of humanity, but humbles us and leads us to do great things for the kingdom of God, simply because of, well, of who Christ has made me. Because, truth be told, without Christ and His righteousness, we are left full of our shame only to be clothed in fig leaves and i don't know about you but that is a sight i believe no one wants to see so here's the thing would you be reminded that it is jesus who has clothed you in his righteousness it isn't anything that you have done it isn't anything that you have said it isn't because of anything that you have been able to accomplish we are clothed in His righteousness simply because God loved us first in our current state. right? Romans tells us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so thanks be to God who loves us, who sent His one and only Son uh, to be the very righteousness we needed. And it is Christ who covers us and has clothed us. Has clothed us. And that should serve to us as motivation. Right? It should serve to us as a desire, as a passion, right? to become a part of Christ or God's body. Right? And so would Christ clothing us in His righteousness lead us and empower us to become a better part of the body of Christ? Would it lead to us contributing more? Would it lead to us investing more? Would it lead to us wanting to be united with the body of Christ? Christ has clothed us. It's not that we could be separated. So that all of us being clothed in the same righteousness could come together and be His church. 
I can't wait uh, to worship with all of you this Sunday because I think this serves as a good reminder as we look around and see all the people who make up our attendance, the body of Christ on a Sunday. It should humble us. It should excite us. It should encourage us to look around and see all the people that God is covering in His righteousness. Until then, I pray that the Lord will bless you, that He would keep you, and when we meet again on Sunday, this coming Lord's Day, I pray, and may this be your prayer as well, that His house would be full of His praise. Until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May you go in peace. Amen and amen.